Like for example, when I first started, there's a lot of trial and error. In fact, my first batch of gelato, they are all uh, very bad. Hi, uh, my name is Ji King. Uh, I'm the owner and founder of Winterwood Gelato. And we are located at uh, 603 Amukyo Avenue 5. I mainly serve high quality, handmade Italian gelato. I was an athletics coach for more than eight years. I was actually an internal auditor for a big firm. And then uh, I've decided that maybe this uh, office work is not really suited for me like, because I like to be very active. Uh, someone introduced me to join his company uh, to assist him in coaching and that's how I started. So when the pandemic hit, all the schools stopped their training. There's also lockdown, so we are unable to conduct our training anymore. So there was definitely a loss of income. So during the pandemic, I was trying to learn different things and I didn't know how to make ice cream. So I went to do my research and then I bought a small machine and I started uh, making gelato. My very first flavor was a pineapple sorbet, which didn't turn out very well. So then it was eventually the classic chocolate, vanilla, pistachio. Uh, I managed to gather uh, many books, many sauces, and I managed to create something that is very on, on my own recipe. I had my family to help me taste the food. And then uh, we had the blind tasting session and they were like, wow, this is really one of the best tasting uh, gelato they, they, they had. And then uh, they think that it has a lot of potential. So there's uh, actually a lot of encouragement coming from my family. Uh, actually, I considered a home-based business, but considering uh, if you want to produce the top quality uh, Italian gelato, I will require the use of correct uh, machines correct equipment and with that small machine I have at home is uh, definitely insufficient. Well, I think uh, when doing f &B, having the best tasting food is, is just one of those things uh, but it does not guarantee your, your success. Uh. I think there's uh, a lot of other components you need to run a successful f &B business. One of which is actually interpersonal skills, uh, how you're going to interact with your customers, uh, how you're going to uh, build relationships with your staff. When customers come in, I don't want them to feel, feel pressured. Of course, they must, they must be very comfortable because some customers, they are just here to see. Some customers, they, are, they want to take their time to choose. So it's a lot of patience, a lot of uh, uh, friendliness. A lot of uh, the customers will feel that they are not uh, being pressured to choose. They're very comfortable. Uh, so this is one of the main things that uh, I tell my staff to do. Because as a coach, my main job is to teach new skills to young athletes. So we have uh, athletes who have never done athletics before. So we have to impart them with something that is very new. So similarly, when the part-timers uh, came to apply for work, most of them, they are very green in the F&B. So they have also zero uh, knowledge. So I could build them from the ground. And uh, as a coach, I'm able to identify uh, what kind of uh, personalities they have and tweak my, my coaching approach. So similarly, in the business setting, uh, wherever part-time staff that come, I look at their character, maybe I will tweak my teaching approach so that I can uh, coach them in the most uh, effective manner so they can, they can function uh, in the job. And some people take failure too, you know, too seriously. You know, in, in fact, it's, it's, it's a failure that, that, that makes you uh, better. Like for example, when I first started, there's a lot of trial and error. In fact, my first batch of gelato, they're all uh, very bad. Right? And it's through all these failures that now my, my gelato is, is really very good, even for the waffles and everything. So when you have trial and error, you have mistakes. And then when you have mistakes, you, you refine your technique. So when you have a refined technique, uh, when a new flavor comes in, it's more or less the same steps. When you use the similar technique and apply, it's just that uh, it will take uh, less time and uh, it's more, more, more efficient. Yeah. So it's, all this is uh, uh, practiced through, through time. When you are coaching uh, athletics or when you are training athletics, uh, you always want to be the best of what you can do and many of times when we are training uh, we in fact every day is always encounter failures after failures so the, uh, the ability to process failures is one of the uh, key things as an athletic coach and as a past ath athlete myself so uh, with that as with that you no know, you're not really affected by failure you are more likely to continue and be, be motivated so some people really take the failure too hard and they, they, they give up uh, too soon. So you can remind yourself that failures is just you know, the learning process to become even better.
one thing about accepting failure. Okay, so you need to accept the failure, and more importantly, you got to make it better the next time. The next time may not be the best, but it got to be better. And you don't just stop there. <laughs> you need to. Even until now, I'm still changing a recipe, making small adjustments. So it just being better and better every day. It's very important. You must have uh, integrity and sincerity in your approach. So you cannot be a hypocrite. You cannot do dishonest things. So what I mean by sincere, uh, integrity is that uh, behind the scenes, when there's no customers looking, I always prepare my food in a safe manner so that it's safe for uh, consumption. And if I were to advertise it as a high quality gelato, I always you know, ensure that I use the best ingredient ever uh, possible to, to, to make. So we, we always, so when a customer come, uh, they, they can really taste the, yeah. So let's say if you do have integrity and you uh, laugh your way through, and then you might not get repeated customers, they come and you taste high quality, but it tastes, you know, it's not good, they will not come back. And uh, you need to be very sincere, uh, approach towards your customers yeah, so it's not like you fake and friendly so really from within we see a customers you are you are someone who is compassionate who is happy to re receive the customer and uh, always be, be kind okay to what no matter how small how elderly all right you do not uh, look down on any uh, small buyers big buyers yeah, so treat everyone equally with kindness my wife she has been my a pillar of strength and she has always been there to support me. Uh, when I have no manpower, she's my free labor. So as, uh, I save a lot of manpower money because of my wife. <laughs> and uh, of course, my, my mom. My mom has been volunteering herself uh, for the past two years. Uh, not every day, of course, because she's uh, really retired and old. Family is the one that uh, keeps you going. Because ultimately, what I want to do this is for my family also.